The mistress who stole my husband gloated at me when she got pregnant, now she's lost his son and mad at me for not caring about her fallen fetus. So my ex-husband Tom, 35M, left me for his work wife Tammy, 25F, two years ago. I, 36F, never liked her, even before I found out about their relationship. The first time I met her at a work event, she told me, while I was heavily pregnant with my youngest, you better up your wife game or I might steal him off you. Well, three months later, she did. This woman literally came with him to help pack the day he moved out, and tried to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about how she wanted our relationship to go forward because she was going to be in my life. Then, as a joke, she said, told you I'd steal him away. Not gonna lie, I'm thankful she did, because when my ex made a comment about her being 23 and her brain not being fully developed, I got the ick so bad it turned my heartbreak into relief. I got everything in the divorce because I caught him in his affair fog, and gave 50-50 custody for our kids' sake. I'm civil for the sake of my kids, so we can both attend events without drama, but other than that, I couldn't honestly care less about them. Around June, Tammy came instead of Tom for the pickup and practically skipped towards me to show off her engagement ring, saying she wanted me as a bridesmaid along with my daughters for something I didn't catch, because I was in a rush to get our cat to the vet. She got upset because I waved off her attempts at conversation per Tom's texts a few hours later. The same thing happened again in September when she told me she was pregnant, which again upset her when I showed zero interest. In December, as soon as I opened the car door, she practically yelled, Tom's finally getting a son, to which I sarcastically replied, I'm sure Lord Tom's excited for an heir to take over his lands and titles, causing drama because Tom's family found it hilarious when Tammy was badmouthing me. December was the last time I saw her until today at drop-offs with Tom. As they approached me, I noticed Tammy didn't look pregnant anymore. Tammy tearfully said, we lost the baby. I didn't answer, just told Tom that our second daughter has a birthday party tomorrow at 3 and the oldest has gymnastics at 5. Tammy literally screamed at me that I was a heartless bleep and bitter, then grabbed the girl's bags and walked away. Tom said I could show a little humanity towards Tammy, and regardless of my feelings, she is my kid's stepmother. I told Tom I don't care about what he's going through because outside of our kids, I don't care about him or Tammy, and I don't owe Tammy anything, especially pity. He called me a bleep, along with other things, and left. Usually, this wouldn't bother me, but my ex-in-laws, whom I'm still on good terms with, have told me I should have shown Tammy some empathy and, at the very least, pretended to care for the sake of the kids. Update 1. So I texted Tom today. Due to Tammy's mental state, I prefer if he or his mom would do all the pickups from now on. If Tammy's mental health gets any worse, I want the girls full time for a couple of weeks until it's a healthier environment for them. Tom tried to call me, but I texted him saying I prefer texts. He said he wanted to have a heart to heart, but yeah, not gonna happen. I asked if it involved the girls and he said yes, that it's also about all of us going forward and the relationship he wishes for us to have. Basically, he wanted family therapy with himself, me, Tammy, and the kids. I said if he thinks the kids need to see a therapist, I would be happy to find one we both can agree on, but again, he just kept bringing it back to us. After a few hours, knowing it was going nowhere, I just left him unread. I called my ex-in-laws, told them the situation, and how I don't want to be involved with anything involving Tammy and Tom unless my kids are directly involved. I reminded them that I've expressed multiple times that I don't care, and I don't want anything more than a civil co-parent relationship. I told them that even though I value my friendship with them, I will go low contact if it happens again. Mother-in-law apologized, saying she was very emotional because, at the end of the day, Tom is her son, and he was heartbroken, plus the baby was her grandchild, which I completely understand and I forgive her. Now, here's where it gets weird, Tammy showed up to my house, randomly and uninvited. I've watched enough true crime to know not to open the door, so I talked and recorded her via the doorbell cam. She was crying, saying she was sorry and she just wanted to be my friend. Then she said I need to forgive her because she lost her baby as karma for what she did to me. She was saying other stuff but I couldn't understand her. I rang the police, my brother, and Tom. She didn't get arrested or anything, but Tom talked to my brother and said he was taking her home and agreed it's best if I have them full time for now. My girls are at home safe, and my brother will be staying with me for the foreseeable future. I'll be seeing a lawyer for the first time on Monday about full custody and a restraining order because I have a sinking feeling it's going to get worse. Before it gets brought up, I just kept telling Tammy to leave my property because I don't want to hear it. I don't know why I was brought into this because I was looking forward to my chill weekend. I'd also like to say for the people in my last post calling me jealous or bitter, I have nothing to be jealous of. Someone who cheats on you isn't a prize, he is Tammy's problem now. Update 2. I won't be updating until all the legal issues are over and my own mental health is in a better place, so it could take anything up to 3 to 6 months. I spoke to a lawyer today. I'm obviously not going to go into details, but with all the evidence and witnesses on my side, I have a good shot at getting full custody. But it's only day 1, and nothing has started yet. Tom tried to force himself on me. It didn't go far, thanks to my brother, but it's left me very shaken. I agreed to let Tom come over to visit the kids whenever he wanted, so when he came over yesterday evening and went into the garden with the kids, I went for a shower. 
Coming out of the bathroom, he cornered me about wanting to talk. I told him it wasn't the time and told him either to go out to the girls or leave. He started saying he made a mistake, that Tammy was crazy, and he wanted to come home to us. I told him to get the bleep out of my house and that there is no us, so he started saying things I physically can't type without breaking down, then tried to force a makeout session, to put it politely. Thankfully, my brother heard and came running. Unfortunately, the kids heard everything when my brother and Tom started fighting. I was in complete shock at the time and couldn't move. Even when Tom was being taken away, I was too scared to move and couldn't comfort my crying children. Not my proudest moment I admit. I don't know what to do with Tom going forward, but I know I can't face him ever again, even with supervision from my father or brother, who both work in law enforcement. Tammy sent hundreds of messages to me and my oldest too, but I can't block her at my lawyer's request. My ex-in-laws have reached out and told me they'll help me in whatever way I need. His sisters have disowned him, but this is still all very new, they might change their minds. I plan on moving after everything gets sorted so I won't ever cross Tammy's path. Thank you all for your love and support. Update 3. Hi guys, I thought I'd give you what is possibly the last update. Now, this isn't going to be epic or anything. So, after everything happened, I was going to press charges against my ex, but his family reached out and said they wanted to meet with their lawyer. Instead of going the court way, my ex said he'd give me full custody and a large amount of money for the girls, more when they got older. I was shown proof of the accounts that were set up with the money already deposited, which can't be touched until they were 18. I took them up on their offer with a condition of my own. Now, I know what everyone is going to say, but having a dad on the offender list plus all the courts would have hurt my daughters more. My condition was that he leave the country, and I would allow one FaceTime a month to each girl who willingly wanted to talk to him. If our daughters decided they wanted to speak to him more, I'd let them. My ex agreed, and I haven't heard from him since. According to Tammy's Facebook, he ghosted her and took their wedding fund her dad gifted them. I couldn't get a restraining order against Tammy because apparently unless she does something bad, she's not a threat, even though she's shown up at my home and kids school multiple times, but I guess that's okay in the eyes of the law. I will be moving though, and I'm not even gonna drop a hint where or when because Tammy and, well, everyone in our town knows about this post after Tammy drunkenly read it out to shame me. As for my kids, they're not taking everything well. They hate their dad but at the same time miss him. I've put them in therapy, and hopefully, they can heal in time. As for me, I'm in therapy too, and I've realized I never want to get married again or even be in a romantic relationship. I want to be the cat lady everyone assumes is a witch. I don't know why we ever let society fool us into thinking marriage was better than a cozy life with cats. Thank you Reddit for everything. And to you, Tammy, I know you'll read this, but I wanted to thank you for stealing my husband. You did me the biggest favor in the world.